Hello, this is Mr. Stein. In this video, we're going to work through the problems from the Mastery Items Week 11D. Alright, number one. Determine the x-intercept for each of the following linear functions. To determine the x-intercept, we substitute 0 and for y. I'm just going to just show you. If we have, well that's just absolutely terrible. If we have an xy grid, Cartesian plane, here's my x, here's my y, and I have a graph running through it. There's a linear graph running through it. There's my x-intercept. It's where it crosses the x-axis. And at the x-intercept, it has some variable x, and the y value is 0, because it's nowhere up and down. It's on the, it's on the y equals 0. So to find our x-intercept, all we do is you input y equals 0 into our equation and determine the x-value. So let's look at our first one. What we're going to do is we're going to put in y is equal to 0. That will get us our x-intercept. So we put 0 is equal to 3x plus 12. Now we need to isolate x to determine our x-value. So minus 12 from both sides. To get 3x is equal to minus 12. Divide both sides by 3. Cross it out to get that minus 4 is equal to x. Therefore, our x-intercept, our x-intercept is at the point of minus 4 on the x and 0 on the y, which if we drew a graph would be somewhere over here. That would be our x-intercept. Letter B. This graph is in a different form, but it doesn't matter. To determine the x-intercept, you always put in y is equal to 0. It doesn't matter what the graph is. So let's put in y is equal to 0 to determine our x-intercept. 3x plus 7 times 0 is equal to 15. 7 times 0 is just 0, so that disappears. So we get 3x is equal to 15. Divide both sides by 3. And we get x is equal to 5. Therefore, our x-intercept is at the point when x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 0. It'll be somewhere over here, where it crosses the x-axis. Right. For x-intercept is found when y is equal to 0. Our y-intercept is found when x is equal to 0. All right, let's add or subtract these two variable equations vertically from chapter 7. First thing we need to do, let's check that everything's in the right order. y, y. Oh, this isn't. Because look, we have our x over here and our x is over here. The preferable form is like this x and then y and then equals some number. So I want to take, in this equation, I want to take this 3x and bring it over. When I take that 3x and bring it over, it becomes negative 3x. So this equation will look like this. Negative 3x plus 5y is equal to 3. Now we can add these two equations. x plus 2y is equal to 4. Our answer is going to be 7. 5y and 2y is plus 7y. Negative 3x plus positive x is negative 2x. That's what we get when we add these two equations together. Let's look in B. Let's check the order. x, x at the first, at the start. y, y. Perfect. Order is great. So let's just write them out. 7x plus 4y equals 2. Subtract 5x plus 5y equals 5. So we're going to subtract each term. So we start off with 2 subtract 5. What's 2 take away 5? Minus 3. 
Then we go over to the RYs. What's 4Y? Positive 4Y. Take away positive 5Y. Negative 1Y. Lastly, we do our subtraction on our, last, on our Xs. What's 7X? Take away 5X. 2X. All right. In Chapter 7, when we get there, you'll see the reason why we do this. Number three, the formula E equals mc squared is very famous. Energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. The speed of light is always 300 million meters per second. So we are looking for our mass. So let's take our formula. Energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. Let's rearrange the formula so our mass is isolated. So we divide this side by c squared, divide this side by c squared. So we get mass is equal to our energy divided by c squared. So in this case, our mass is going to be equal to our energy, 1.7 times 10 to the 40th, divided by 300 million squared. I go to my calculator. Well, I need to remember that, 1.7 times 10 to the 40. I put that in brackets, 1.7 times 10 to the power of 40, that's on my top, and I divide that by 300 million squared, and I just have, just am able to write down C, and then square it, and I get 1.9 times 10 to the 23. 1.9 times 10 to the power of 23. Right now, this should make sense. A big energy gives us a smaller mass. I mean, it's still a huge mass, but the energy number is way bigger. Last one. Energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. This time we know the mass and we're calculating the energy. So we don't need to rearrange this formula at all. Energy is equal to 245 times 300 million squared. Small energy, we're going to get a small mass number. We're going to get a huge energy number. So we go back here. 345 times my speed of light. And I square that speed of light. And I get 3.105 times 10 to the power of 19. So 3.1 times 10 to the power of 19. All right. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below or contact me directly.